Hey, future Titans. My name is Bethany Whitaker, and I'm currently a student at California State University, Fullerton. Today, we'll be reading a story titled George's Energy Adventure, brought to you by the North American Young Generation in Nuclear. Today was the big day. This was what George had been looking forward to all summer. George, hurry up, his mom called upstairs. We'll be late to Edison's Adventures Camp. Nothing could be better than hanging out with friends while learning about science. This year, they were exploring energy. Hello, inventors. I'm Miss Megawatt. Mega what? said the girl next to George. Megawatt, said the camp leader. I'm a bundle of energy in a short amount of time. Let's get going. This year, your project is something you will all love. You are going to build your own city, but you must keep the lights on while using what you learned about energy. The girl next to George jumped out of her seat in excitement and said, I know a kind of energy that runs all the time, no matter what the weather is like. Don't short circuit, Marie, said Miss Megawatt. Cool down and listen. You will be using building blocks to make a city where your children will live someday, Miss Megawatt explained. <laughs> the children giggled with glee. Remember that all cities need energy. They need a lot of energy. They need it all the time, every hour, every day. George knew exactly what to do. He began to build. Do you want to work as a team? Marie asked. No, I'm already going to make the best city ever. I don't really need your help, said George. Are you using nuclear energy? I learned that it's great for big cities, Marie explained happily. Who needs nuclear energy? George said impatiently. My parents have solar panels in our house. That is all anyone needs. Block after block. George added houses, stores, and solar panels. He soon ran out of blocks for all the solar panels he needed for his city. Cities need a lot of energy. George was stuck. He tried and tried. He could not build enough energy for his city. Frustrated, he knocked his city down and stormed off to bed. George opened his eyes and saw a strange city. Wait! I know this city. It's mine. Looking up and down and all around, George heard a warm, friendly voice. Hi, George. My name is Sunny. I heard you created this city. Come meet everyone that keeps this place running. Curiously, George followed Sunny into the familiar city. As clouds began to drift across the sky, Sunny slowed to a stop. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm starting to feel really sleepy, Sunny said. Go on without me. I'll just rest here a bit. Before George could say, sweet dreams, Sunny was sleeping soundly. With a strong gust of wind came another voice. <sighs> Looks like you could use some help. I'm windy. Allow me to show you around. George oohed and ahed as he walked through the streets. This was what his city was meant to be. As they went further into the city, Wendy eased to a halt. <sighs> Sorry, George, there's less wind here and I cannot move another inch. I've gone as far as I can go. You can meet my friends in that diner ahead. George pushed open the diner door and heard a loud chomping coming from a nearby table. He sat down. My name is Cole, Cole said between bites. And I'm Gassy. Gassy burped before continuing his meal. Do you two also get tired? George asked. Cole shook his head and continued to eat. Gassy replied, No, we're always here whenever you need us. Except if the buffet runs out, Cole added. Mm, mm, George said as he took the last bite of his dinner. He waited, 
But Gassy and Cole just kept eating and eating. Just as they finished one plate, another took its place. <laughs> wow, you two must be hungry, George said. You betcha, we have to eat this much so we can work hard all the time, replied Cole. Tired of waiting, George said, goodbye. George wandered out of the city. In the distance, he saw a blue glow on the horizon. As George approached, he saw an atom. Hey, I'm Nuke, said the atom. George asked, why are you all the way out here by yourself? Well, people are a little scared of me, so I work out here, Nuke said, but I'm a really great neighbor. <sighs> the sun set and the wind stilled. The diner closed for the night. Even when my friends get hungry or sleepy, I keep supplying energy to the city. Nuke started dancing with his new friend. George twirled round and round. George woke up with a start as he fell out of bed. Eureka, he yelled as he leapt up from the floor. Cities can't work with just one form of energy. It's best to have them all. George ran to find Marie. Marie, Marie, George shouted. I was wrong. We have to work together. I tried, but I can't do it without you. George and Marie worked together to build a bigger, better city. That's wonderful, children. Your teamwork has empowered you and your city, said Miss Megawatt. The wind and the sun provide renewable energy, Miss Megawatt continued. Coal and natural gas run all the time, no matter the weather. Nuclear is always on providing clean energy. Having diversity helps achieve success. The end. Now, if you'd like to learn more, there's a glossary of words used in this book at the top. The second part is historical figures. The characters in this book are actually real and actual scientists. Thanks for watching.